I remember going to Shanghai and there was this factory. So when we went in, right, actually like they were like, Oh, welcome Singapore! And then we went in. And then after that, they were like, they were just waiting at the entrance. Uh, and I'm like, uh, are we waiting for someone? And then I was like, uh, where's your boss? So I'm like, oh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> so I started talking to him more and then telling him about this concept. And then he was just saying like, huh? So you never go to university, you do this? Uh? And I'm like, uh, yeah. And then he was like, yeah, I don't like bother with this kind of dreams la. You just go back to school, you know, go and study. Hi, my name is Mandy and I'm 25 this year. I'm the co-founder of The Book Company. I started from primary school. I just wanted to have extra pocket money. I started selling marshmallows to my friends. And it started from there that I realised, oh, it's actually interesting. And then moved on to secondary school when a guy who liked me asked if I wanted to take part in this business competition with him. And at that point of time, I thought having a boyfriend is cool, right? So I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> but during the four weeks that we had to make our own products, we made coasters, we made friendship bracelets, and basically anything we can find in the house. And then we had this weekend where we could sell everything to the public and the experience of selling um, something to someone to actually create something from scratch I think that was something that I really liked so in the end I fell in love um, not with him but with the idea of creating something and making someone's day light up uh, because of that to me it was a new experience and I wanted something that was different I would say After I got a sentence letter, I was like super happy because SMU is my dream university, right? And without thinking much, I actually like accepted it. But once I accepted it, I think there was this confusion whether whatever I was, the choice whether I was making was actually the right one. Because at that point of time, I actually finished interning in three different startups and I really wanted to start something of my own. It was just something in me was telling me that uh, I should reconsider my decision. I actually started asking my friends and family what they thought if I actually took a year off to pursue something uh, of my own. Lah. And I think the comments they made were like not very nice at that point of time. My friends were like, oh, you know, where got so easy one? Or like, you know, so like, or like do it during university, like you don't have to do it now. I think my parents were also hesitant about it. They decided that, you know, like if you really want to pursue this path, you can, but like you just had to be like responsible financially. Lah. So they cut off my allowance. Needed to actually take on a part-time job just to um, make ends meet and also like to have the financial resources to actually invest um, in the business itself. Also, I realised at the point of time that you can't take money out from your bank account if you have less than $20. So that was at the point, I was like so far, but I refused to ask um, for money from my parents. Maybe it was pride, maybe it was I needed to you know, prove that I was doing okay. So I, during that time, I actually borrowed money from my friends to tide me through. It was anything else but not showing that side to, that vulnerable side, that weak side to um, my parents. There were a lot of points of time where I really wanted to give up. I think it was at the point of time where we wanted to collect like market survey la, for like what our bags and whether it was something that people needed. Then I met this guy who was decked out in like designer clothes. So I started talking to him more and then telling him about this concept. And then he was just saying like, huh? So you never go to university, you do this? Ah? Then I'm like, uh, yeah. I was like, I'm thinking a year off la, to actually do this. And then he was like, yeah, I don't like bother with this kind of dreams la. You just go back to school, you know, go and study. Then after that, um, basically just demeaning me to uh, say that it, whatever I was doing was a waste of time and I should just forget it. Yeah, and that part of time I was very affected because it was after a long day of like interviewing people on the street and when the responses were not what I expected, I have this new guy who was like, you shouldn't even be doing this, you know. I think that was a double step to the heart that um, I took it quite badly and after that I remember just like I should just go home. Like pouring my heart sweat and tears and like going to manufacturers and then finding out that the molding cost was 20k. So first you get rejections from like people that you do street surveys on and then after that you get rejections from people who, who you thought would recognise your product as best selling. So that came as a double blow to me that whatever I did for the past six months was a waste of time lah.
I think the turning point came when we had this challenge by my mentor. So like he said that um, he'll give us five thousand dollars, you know, if we manage to sell a thousand bags within three months. And it was during the three months that we just tried all methods to get sales. And then um, it was all about sending cold emails and door knocking on gyms. So one of it was actually the master franchise of Anytime Fitness. And she actually um, saw our cold email and replied to us. She actually gathered like everyone, all the Anytime Fitness outlets in Singapore to actually place an order. So that was the turning point where we had our first big order of um, a thousand pieces. It gave us a little bit more confidence that this was the right product and this was where we should go. And we just decided to test not only the Singapore market but the international market through crowdfunding. We placed it on Kickstarter and surprisingly within like 30 days we managed to raise like four times of what we expected. And that was insane to us because orders were not just coming from Singapore, it was coming from US. And then there were other countries like Egypt and all that. I was like, oh my god, what? So it just showed that um, the, the demand that we had is not just local but international as well. Just be bold and do it. Know that there's no opportunity cost right now for you. The right time to do it is now. Lah. Especially if you feel early. Um, next time, if you want to start a business and everything, you will have all these experiences that people don't have. It's just about putting in the hours and making sure that you're doing your best and giving 100% of your effort to whatever you're doing. 